Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Modern Merchant Podcast. My name is Austin. I'm your host. Um, in today's episode, we have a very special guest. We have Jeff Ross. He's enterprise sales executive over at Octane. Um, has been in the ship station side and ship engine side, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But Jeff, thanks for uh, jumping on. Yeah, Austin. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, you know, first question I like to jump into right out of the gate is, Quick little background about yourself, um, what you're kindly, currently doing with Octane. I know there's a lot of other brands that fall under the Octane portfolio. So just a quick little overview would be great. Yeah. So currently enterprise sales with Octane. So Octane, maybe a new name to people, but stamps.com is certainly a familiar one or Indicia. And so we are, are kind of the evolution of, of that brand and company. So over the years, stamps acquired a lot of e-commerce companies like ShipStation, Shipping Easy, Ship Engine, ShipWorks. Uh, and there's certainly more around the globe as well. But in an effort to kind of transition the business and help the customer, we're really uniting under this Octane brand and helping bring all these products to anyone who needs them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and we've worked with ShipStation in the past. We've worked with ShipEngine. We actually have multiple integrations with you guys and, um, you know, looking into ShipWorks. You know, I've talked with a couple of ship engine um, people on the side, and you know, we've we've looked at like the way of ship con- uh, ship engine connect, right? That mm-hmm. going to market and, and that being a very API first driven. So I've had some really good conversations, you know, with you guys. And um, you know, one thing how I kind of want to start this out is I want to take a step back, right? You started in software, um, I believe, at SBS Commerce. So take me back to when everything started, getting into software or e-commerce, and how that all came about for you. Oh yeah, man. Um, so probably like a lot of people, uh, getting out of college and didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> and fortunately enough, my college roommate interned at SPS Commerce. Okay. He's like, hey, apply here. There's a former alum doing some stuff. It, it's cool. It's technology. It's EDI. And nobody knows what EDI <laughs> is. Um, so I was fortunate enough to, to get a good entry-level job there mm-hmm. and kind of help grow a business that was in the technology space, in the retail space, it was as it was kind of evolving. Um, so it was an interesting place to start and get my foot just into technology and business in general, right? Of how these yeah. companies work and operate. And you started, did you start pretty soon with them and their kind of like life cycle stage of, because SBS Commerce is like, I mean, Commerce Hub, SBS Commerce, when you think of EDI and you think of software, especially on the e-commerce realm, it's like you think of those. So did you get, I mean, you were there for like 11 years, I think. So you got started relatively early in their, in their I guess, yeah, ascendance. I think it was like 204 or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was implementing the web product and it was just a great environment to grow in, you know, mm-hmm. learn about, first of all, what EDI is and how this impacts businesses, but then how we're using technology to solve really the old way of doing things. And it was cloud-based web technology, new to a lot of people. And it kind of opened my eyes up to the possibilities, right. Of, of what I could do with my career and, and just felt fortunate to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you got started. What, how'd you, what'd you get started with, with SBS? Uh, well, it was at the time it was web forms implementation. So we okay. were, so sales would sell the deal. Uh-huh. They would come to us and say, we want to connect to White Wayfair. So we would actually set up their web access, right. And get them access to the portal. We would reach out to Wayfair, set up that connection and kind of handhold them and train them through the process. So I got a lot of firsthand experience working with people in the warehouse, you know, these small business owners that were hated working with Walmart because they made them do EDI, but they needed to work with Walmart uh, because they needed the business. Um, So it it was really fun just to see the different ways businesses operated and, and the different personalities that operate businesses. Were there, were there ever any times, because I know you moved eventually you move from like, what is that analyst implementation kind of job up to partnerships. And and I'm sure there's a lot of fun stories or, you know, uh, inflection points, like we like to say on the podcast of, you know, uh, a growing business, but like, Mm -hmm. take me back through just the experience of that 11 years with SBS, like what stands out to you of, you know, that was awesome. You know, I was happy. I was, we were so stoked. We got to, you know, $1 million company or $5 million company, $10 million company, or, or you know, you know, we introduced this specific piece of software, or this specific part of the platform. Like what's, what were some fun learning experience or inflection points, pivots, you know, that you guys saw in those 11 years? 
being able to go on site and see how Burton and go to their headquarters okay. or cool. um, who's the multi knife company, uh, multi tool, a big one, there's Leatherman. Leatherman and and getting to actually walk through their facilities and see how they manufacture and, 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 and how, what we're doing truly impacts everyone else in the business. The first few times I did that was absolutely eye opening um, because you didn't realize the small piece of what you're contributing, but how it plays into the greater good. Um, so I always took those as a point of appreciation, no matter where we went of just people letting us in. It's certainly like a, a relationship thing as well. They're letting you into their house. Right. Um, so that, that was a big eye opening experience initially. And then going public, I mean, that oh, yeah. is certainly a big, a big change across the business. Um, being able to see, a lot of different types of leaders through those 11 years have different types of managers see where I could like, and being able to reflect on that and take it all in. That was, I think what I got the most out of it overall, I look so much back at the time and look back on, Oh, I remember this specific director reacted in this way or acted this way. I either liked that or I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I see myself in a situation where I want to emphasize the good. Um, so just trying to, help help learn from every experience right to what we do today and kind of how we move forward so did you like moving into like customer service getting out of that analyst job yeah the analyst job was good like i said just to learn and and be able to relate to the customer and deal with angry people and the rush <laughs> and things that you can't control yep. um, but i always had this need just to help more and want to be closer to the customer and i always looked up to the people in partnerships as kind of the trailblazers, right? They were helping the business innovate and go to new places where on the implementation side, you're, you're kind of, it's, it's, it's a little more routine, right? New products will come out, new things come out, but it's, it's not as actiony as on the sales side. So that was kind of how I saw my first transition to get to sales uh, was a safe way through the partnerships. And, and SPS had such a booming partnership program at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a natural fit to kind of go there and help out. Yeah, that that's that was a good move in my eyes for for you and Thanks, for man. anybody. I I feel like in that standpoint because being in e-commerce software and being in it as long as I've been in it, you know, you see a a, a commerce hub or an SBS commerce, and they just like they just double down on the partnerships. And it's it's and whether it's just partnerships from like a referral standpoint or partnerships just from like an exposure standpoint or just providing um you know like quality of the platform to people that just need that in general is just mm -hmm. providing customers like what they need. I feel like they had such a stronghold on like we partner with all of these people with this huge ecosystem. And if you ever want to use any of these people, you have to use us. And that's like, once you've got that foot in the door, it's so much easier to sell. It's so much yeah. easier to, to grow when you have a, um, it, I like to call it a partner ecosystem, but at that time, I mean, with SBS or with a company like SBS, I feel like it's just like, these guys are evangelists now at this point, they're not even just, huh. you know, Hey, start of the new year. What do you guys want to do together? It's like, they're just advocating to, you have to use SBS commerce. So it's good to get your perspective that way. Cause I, for me, it was just the job, right. Of yeah. helping grow this. I was taking the bus every day from work in Minneapolis, like having to trudge through the snow. And it was a, it was a grind, a great experience, but I, I don't think I realized the impact that we had collectively as we were growing that, but it carries over. I think the partnership thing is everyone, everything. Bill Gibson, uh, he's the CEO of DePosco and this will stick with me. It has stuck with me for probably seven years now, but he always would preach economies of connectivity right? That's the world we live in of, of how, how, how you can drive that. And that's really the foundation of everything is economies of connectivity and partnerships and just being a good person and knowing how to build relationships helps yeah. drive all that. Yeah. I, some of the best, and, you know, we'll talk about this here in a sec about uh, getting from partnerships to sales executive or getting into the sales realm. Um, some of the best things that I've heard was, you know, the best salesmen don't sound like salesmen, right? It's like, they, they're just there to build relationships. They're just here to have a conversation, be, you know, have a good time, be happy, help out, things like that. And those seem to always be the best salesmen that aren't very salesy. Um, so that's, 
I like that. I like that quote as well. Um, so well, that's the challenge today, right? Like even trying to outbound and, and talk, start new conversations. Uh-huh. There's so much noise and, and so much cheesiness out there uh, that, you know, we're trying to find ways to, to be different, right. And, and sound more normal or yeah. grounded or empathetic to what they're doing. Uh, and that's certainly like, I think a challenge a lot of salespeople are facing. Oh yeah. Outbound. Let's just, you know, we'll do a full podcast on just talking about <laughs> let's do it. how to do cold outbound or warm out, but whatever outbound you're doing. <laughs> it's I, because we all get those emails, right? We all get mm-hmm. the different emails trying to sell to the company of something and you know, which one's a good one, which one isn't because they grab your attention. Um, yes. Wow. We'll, we'll talk about that. Another time. <laughs> um, so was there anything specific why you wanted to go to Octane or, or at the time you probably what you guys started with ShipStation specifically? Yeah, it's just crazy how life comes at you, right? So I was managing the partnership at SPS with ShipStation and just developed a good relationship with their team hmm. in Austin. I mean, I'd been at SPS 10 years. You know, there was a lot of change with my father passing away, having a kid. So life was hitting me hard. And I just knew we had to make a move. And it, it was just timing, right? It felt good. And it was the right offer where, you know, we were managing the partnership and they're like, Hey, we have a partnership role. Do you want to move your family down? Um, I didn't say yes before asking my wife uh, and talking through it, but life just came together perfectly where it worked out. Um, Yeah. We made the move and came down and and it was, it was a good, a, a good move at the right time. Yeah. So, and you went from super cold weather to nice, uh, booming. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So I started in August and I, I came down first without the family as we kind of got transitioned. And I, I rode, I was probably, probably like three miles away in the apartment that we had. And I rode my bike the first day. I was like, I don't know. I, I didn't have a car. I just came in, got a bike yeah. three miles. I got this, whatever. Well, it was like 105 degree day. It was 90 <laughs> before the sun even came up and I was dressed in like a button up and, and I was sweaty mess. And I was quite the laughing stock. <laughs> so I was the Minnesota guy that stood out for sure. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. We're, hey, we're, we're in Florida. So we did it. We did the heat. Yep, yep. We're dead, dead set in the middle of January and it's already in the seventies. It's awesome. Um, so Austin, how's Austin? How was that? How was that transition? A lot of tech companies there, you know, we've talked about coming out and visiting big commerce and a couple mm-hmm. other guys in the space, even probably ship station, I think was in the conversation. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Austin. How's that? How's oh, that's that great, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, from a, from a company standpoint, I think there's a really good tech culture that's going to start booming. Not only do you have the startups, but then you also have the mix of the big boys with the net suites, uh, the Googles, big commerce of the like. And I think there's kind of that good Austin vibe with everybody involved in technology that can just get together and help help work together, right? And form these partnerships. So that seems great. And then, yeah, you got the food, you got the music, you got the sun. Uh, it, it's good. It's not bad. It's a good place to be able to do business and work. You got the Longhorns. You got Austin FC. I got to go to one of those games. <laughs> um, yeah, that's I. That's a you know, it's a really cool. And that again, another interesting conversation to have is is seeing Austin as like the new, what people are saying, it's the next Silicon Valley. A lot of people are moving out from California, Texas, especially with what's been going on in taxes and things like that in California. So definitely another conversation for another time. But, you know, whenever you got started with ShipStation and God, I mean, Octane and then, you know, stamps.com and then, or see, I'm getting them all mixed up and then ShipWorks and like just getting all these people together, right. like, how has been from a company's growth standpoint been for you? You know, how, how, how eye opening or fun or again, anything you've seen in the past five plus years of like, this has been awesome. Cause I feel like if, if I ever look at anybody in that small business, mid market business, and even getting into the enterprise business, like ship stations, like the, the North star of these companies that just build like mm-hmm. crazy with this e-commerce boom, you know, what's that been like? I mean, it's been great. I think the opportunity for us to unite under Octane is good for everybody. Not only the people at the business, but also partners, merchants, anybody who engages with us. It's just allowing us to bring everything to the forefront. And um, you know, I think that's going to be an advantage for us as we move forward. Uh, it was eye-opening where you realize there's all these acquisitions happening all over the place, but how hard it is to integrate the businesses. 
Um, mm. it, it's a challenge, right? And it can take time. And for a lot of years, we operated as Shipworks, as ShipStation, as these separate units. And really now everyone's uniting under this Octane brand to, to serve the merchant. So whether you need an API-based solution or a UI, or you want better rates, rates with stamps, uh, it's not three, four, five different people you can talk to, right? We can help service people in an easier, more efficient manner. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you made the move from partnerships to sales specifically. Yeah. And I know sometimes they can go hand in hand. I totally get it. I did the same thing. I started out as a sales rep and moved into partners um, <laughs> with our company. So it's a little bit vice versa or, or um, actually kind of the same thing. But what was that like going into uh, partnerships into a sales role? And was that you were, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that was kind of going from ship station to transitioning, doing a lot more ship engine specific work, right? Yeah, it was uh, terrifying <laughs> having a real quota <laughs> for the first time. Um, yeah. But it was a challenge I, I always knew I wanted to take on. Um, my dad was a sales rep. I grew up seeing that. I kind of knew that was the end game. Uh, of where I wanted to be and help. So it was an opportunity to challenge myself, but an opportunity to be a trailblazer and have kind of the startup mentality within this bigger org with all these other motions going on. Um, you know, at the time, Ship Engine was really just a handful of folks growing it. And now there's, you know, 12, 15 plus sales reps helping uh, and it's just growing like crazy. So it's been fun to just be a part of that. Right. And to, to help influence the culture and just be a part of the growth is great. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That is great. We ship engine has been, um, kind of like one of those, it's funny. I, and I don't know if you guys are like this too, talking with our developers, uh, and being on more of like the tech side, cause ship engine in my eyes is a little bit more of the technical mm -hmm. API selling to developers rather than selling to CEOs or e-commerce managers. Right. Um, you know, it's funny with our developers when they see really good API documentation, or they see a company that understands like that we're an API first company or like we need to get out of the EDI, you know, archaic right, right mindset. And, um, we always look at Stripe. It's like one of the main companies that is like the like the holy grail of APIs and they love how it all works and things like that. And I remember with Ship Engine um, and integrating with rate shopping, because that's what we were doing, Flexpoint mm -hmm. with with uh with Ship Engine and looking at rate shopping, you know, we were stoked about it. Like a lot of things we could do on that front of an API first and being more tech savvy. And I heard it from my devs. And so for you as a sales rep, it's like you're not selling ship station to the e-commerce manager that needs a better way of, right. you know, printing shipping labels and fulfilling you're selling like an API to devs. I mean, what is that like? I, that just seems like, you know, to us, like pretty crazy, a, a completely probably different sales cycle, completely different persona. Like, you know, you're not just doing your, uh, all right, next go around of the demo, next go around of the demo. It's probably a little bit different. Tell us about that. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And, and that's been part of the learning curve for me, not only diving into direct sales for the first time, but then ha having these complexities, right? And kind of these mm -hmm. different buying groups that I'm used to. Um, the tech sale is easy. Yeah, people love our documentation. A lot of people compare us. They're, hey, you're the shipping of Stripe. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we've gotten that a lot from folks, but you realize quickly that that only gets you so far, right? You do need mm -hmm. to get to a business stakeholder and someone who sees the bottom line and the value can, and can get it across the finish line. So it's great to have the technical buy-in and the love there. Um, like we always want to be on the leading edge of that yeah. and for people to love us there. But yeah, I think part of what we're getting better at is how do we, and th this is where the Octane message helps a ton is how do we, how do we get those other stakeholders to the table and get them to see the bigger picture of the partnership and what we can bring, because here's where they are now, but here's what this relationship also has to offer as your business evolves or might need now. Yeah. And that's a good point. You guys can go in house for, um, uh, the evolution of you're still using this, you know, you're still, you're still on spreadsheets, like for keeping yeah. inventory yeah. up to date. Like, what are you, what are we doing? We've got, you know, let's look at Shipworks. This would probably be a, a good option for you guys. And that's that's always great. We've always talked about that selling from within. You know, you got one yeah. product and then when you get them on, 
I mean, are they just the champion user for the rest of their lives? And like, that's it. We're not adding any more value. Um, sounds great for you guys. You guys can have all these different platforms kind of in your back pocket of like, all right, we've got the tech API stuff, rate shopping down. What's next? Like, what else can we check off for you? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing the portfolio we have and the breadth of the market that it covers, you know, whether yeah. you're uh, shipping easy or Metapack, right? Metapack services, some of the biggest retailers, I think around the globe in Europe for sure. Um, so it, it, it's, it's been really cool to learn about the other solutions and kind of see how we can tell that story of the journey, right? And yeah. use ShipStation, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of customers on there. Some are, some love it and we'll use it forever. Some are growing and their tech stack's going to change and we can help them use ship engine, other services to just stay more efficient and stay on the leading edge of what they need to do to be relevant and keep growing. Yeah. So yeah it, it's great. So you guys, um, Got a couple, some new stuff going on. I, I would assume you're doing something new every single week. Um, at least a new port, someone in the portfolio or another acquisition, right? Like I feel like I saw multiple acquisitions with stamps um, or Octane and ShipStation, all that stuff. Um, you're telling me you're, you guys are working on or, or looking at more of a 3PL perspective, helping a lot more 3PL companies out? Yeah, it's been interesting to see as we've kind of brought this Octane message to market. Mm -hmm. uh, how 3PLs are adopting this, this multi-product solution, right? So we're able to them to leverage ShipStation and Ship Engine together in a way where they're able to just integrate order sources easier, connect to carriers easier. Um, and it's been kind of this model that has naturally come together through mm -hmm. the evolution of our products. And so we've put a little focus around it. I, I mean, whether it's a WMS or these three PLs. I mean, right now, customer acquisition is really hard for them. You know, technology connecting to the order sources is tough, and there's a lot of carriers to integrate with. And kind of bleeding ship station and ship engine together, there's uh, some really cool partnerships we're helping evolve, and people leverage our technology to just solve solve things in a new way. Gotcha. So your so let's take me through kind of like a quick example. The the three PLs themselves are your your y'all's customer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they're leveraging your software to just help grow their business of being a fulfillment expert. Right. So think if, if you have the order sources, Magento, Shopify, Etsy, you know, we have the ability for you to import those through ShipStation or ShipEngine. So mm -hmm. if you want the UI, you want the API, you know, for your customers, you can bring those orders into your WMS mm -hmm. and then you can connect ShipEngine to your WMS to just batch process, high volume, efficient shipping, rate shopping, tracking, all that good stuff that you want there yeah, uh, and have a really good mix of the two. And where it got cool is you can just give your customers ship station and that's an affordable solution for them to implement and have a workflow that just connects that through your process. Yeah. And you can take customer onboarding from weeks to, to days or hours in, in some of these cases. And you can drop the price from, you know, hundreds, thousands a month to, 129 99 a month, you know? Yeah. Easy, easy stuff. That's cool. I, I, we like that. You know, we've, we're trying to see the same thing with FlexPoint in the sense of, you know, new personas popping up or, or new um, customers we can cater to, you know, from like, I don't think you guys were like, we're going to be selling through PLs, you know, like anytime yeah. soon, like right out of the gate. Um, no, and it's a, uh, I mean, there's, there, in the 3PL industry, there seems to me to me to be kind of a not a not a revolution, but a change of guard happening where it's been a old school industry. A lot of guys have been in the business 40, 50 years. They want to retire, their kids are taking over, young blood's coming in, hmm. and people are just more thoughtful of technology. And you have this mix with that and these legacy systems. And they're just trying to keep up with like the changing landscape of e-commerce and retail bleeding together. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's sparking some really cool conversations and way, way we can help them use our technology. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, we see it a lot too, in the sense of, um, you know, people wanting to adopt third-party logistics companies, even though they technically really don't need to, um, but it's smart for them to, because of, mm -hmm you know, COVID, right? Cross-border um, fulfillment right now. You got the 
freight right. guys just chilling off the coast in California and they're not getting their products, like things like that. Or, um, you know, what we see a lot is, wow, why are we just getting business on the West Coast like crazy? You know, why are we sending everything over to our warehouse in, you know, in Northeast United States? We should start looking into 3PLs. And that's kind of where we see a lot of stuff banking on on this we call it a distributed order management or distributed yep. fulfillment network of we don't have to rely on one warehouse and one location or, you know, one supplier, one distributor that might be drop shipping for me or brands. It's, it's, it's a whole network. You need to create this network to, to take over every single use case that you see throughout the day of orders from, you know, Washington to Florida, to Missouri, to Canada, to Mexico, to, you know, uh, the UK. And it's like, you got to fill that out. The more you grow from an e-commerce perspective and the more you do that, the more you need technology and you can't old school it. Yep. And yeah, I think that's where the 3PL network we're helping build is what Mm -hmm. the merchants in our network are really going to love because it's, you don't, it, you don't have to give all your business to a 3PL now, right? You can be strategic about it to your point and put one just on the East Coast or in strategic locations where you know you can fulfill one day, two day shipping. Um, and how do you find those folks, right? How do you connect with them? And that's what we want to help make easier, right? So as we partner with th- these 3PLs and help them leverage the Octane products, there's ways they can tap into our network, right? And be part of this fulfillment network, network as well, where the ship station customers can find them, which is really cool. Well, what's really cool too is, and, you know, we've talked about how much we can tap into our customer base of, of um, not necessarily the referrals, but just building a good experience with them. You guys, if your customers is the 3PL, that benefits everybody because you've yeah. got now you can leverage their customers to be ship station customers um, or ship works customers or anybody to just mold in together. So it's like an evangelist plus a customer. And it's like, that's a, that's a win-win. Like that's yeah. awesome. The, the uh, economies of connectivity, right. Being able to integrate exactly. the, the solutions and have workflows that can support UI and an API is powerful for a 3PL just because they're, it's pennies on the dollar and technology is either legacy or uh, just something they're not dead honed in on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, cool. Well, Hey, we're wrapping up a little bit here. Anything new going on, you know, with Octane, anything we can keep an eye out for this year, we're starting here, you know, we're ready. (laughs) Yeah. Can't believe it. We're almost February now. And uh, and now we're getting into the new year. I mean, what's going on with the team over there for, for 2022? Yeah, more and more carriers uh, and the global push continues. So bringing PackLink out of Madrid into mm. the fold, we have MetaPack in the UK. So we're just seeing more and more companies need more integrations to different countries around the world. So getting Europe wrapped out, um, APAC, and just kind of continue to help folks as we get into more of the, the product adoption or the kind of the product roadmap is, is just continuing to help ways to integrate everything right and yeah. and help bring it to the merchant in one one nice package yeah makes sense okay cool well hey we're wrapping up time here one last thing give us a quick little plug on octane and you know the services why any retailer out there listening to us you know would want to check you guys out oh awesome you're gonna put me on the spot like that uh, no i mean i mean octane is really just about helping anything on the fulfillment side like it's really about starting that conversation understanding where companies are, are trying to improve and seeing if we can just be good Sherpas in that sense uh, of guiding you to either something we can help with or just telling you, you know, we can't and let's stay in touch. Yeah. 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 And, and I, and, you know, to be honest, I'd echo that we had a really good conversation. I think it was Jim on your team. Um, we've talked to Krishna at ship station. It, it seems like there's a great tiered system for you guys and, and any retailer out there, so small businesses to mid-market business, to enterprise business, you've got a portfolio for everybody. Um, so if you, you need software on the fulfillment side, definitely um, go check out Octane. Yeah, it's a beautiful blend of technology and we have the rates too. So don't forget about the stamps and Disha side. Um, people underestimate the cost savings and the value that that can bring to a business. So it's mm-hmm. this, this very cool blend of technology, but you have the the rates piece of it, which is a whole nother podcast we could do. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole nother realm of saving money for your business. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you jumping on today. Thank you so much, Austin. I really appreciate it.
Yeah, no problem. And everybody out there listening, make sure to tune into the next episode and subscribe and uh, obviously like our videos on the podcast that you're listening to. Catch you guys later.